What is going on everybody and welcome back into Barley Studios. Who's ready for a continuation video in the vintage fishing bobber canvas and acrylic video or playlist better yet. Yes, you can find that entire playlist on my YouTube channel. I will link that playlist above if you'd like to check out any of the previous videos. So the reference photo that we had taken is from Hobby Lobby. Thank you Hobby Lobby for creating an awesome little sign there. Uh, in your sign department wishing I was fishing. Yes, I feel this when I'm at work all the time <laughs> or sitting on the couch or we just wish the kids and us could get out of the house and, and just go fishing. Um, of course, we're going to begin this canvas work by applying a thick layer of gesso. Yes, it is a textured gesso layer. And we did make sure that that is kind of following the overall, uh, you know, curvature of where we think the bobber would be curving. We also had already sculpted in the very first video a, a layer of, of uh, clay. This is Sculpey Original across the middle band. Uh, and that is a double layered middle band just to give it a little bit of extra texture. And then we also sculpted the kind of cork looking um, apparatus at the top of the, the bobber there. Does it have a technical name? Leave it in the comments below. I do not know. We are using burnt umber here and we're gonna apply a overall tone to the canvas. And I'm making sure that my, my overall paint strokes are following the direction that I think that those little lines in the gesso and where the, the possible like paint or or a, a curvature of the circular item would be. Not a great way to say that, but it kind of gets the point across. Make sure your paint strokes are following the direction you believe the item should be going. And in this case, the, the top portion is going out and around and down, uh, and then the, the bottom portion is coming down and then, f and then curving upward into a half moon shape. As we begin to introduce more of the uh, Mars Black here, you'll see that the bottom will start to shade out and kind of transform the way it looks a little bit. We're going to apply more so dark tones underneath the middle band and then around the very bottom, possibly where it could have been sitting in water or shallow water or just sitting in water in general and maybe like the, the, the tackle box or uh, anything. And what we're going to do is we want to make sure they just have some general tones to it so that it just looks really good. Whether the viewer thinks that this bobber is made completely out of wood or it's made out of like a two-tone plastic, which I'm actually referencing, uh, whichever the, they decide and however they imagine it is up to the viewer. But the overall tones and the color is leaning towards the burnt umber brown and dirty color. But as you can see, the bottom is really darkening out quite a bit, and I do I do like the overall shade that it has. We're also going to introduce a little bit of that Mars Black to the top right there, uh, and then I'm just going to kind of apply just a little bit of shadow to it before we start to apply a little bit of a, a burnt umber and a titanium white wash to, to the upper layer here. And we're going to apply that in a very thin layer, kind of like a glaze, uh, before we start to introduce more of the darker browns, uh, more direct 100% uh, burnt umber into that layer just to give it a really nasty effect. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and, uh, and bleach it out a little bit before we do that. Uh, and this really, I think, makes it look really, really look like it has like a tone of, of brown or wood underneath it. So it could possibly be like an antique uh, bobber that's made out of 100% wood, where it's hand carved. And um, like I said, we we really don't do that much anymore. Most of it's all plastic and and composite materials. But it's really kind of cool to know that they used to carve a lot of these uh, antique bobbers, and that's why they've lasted so long. Uh, not many people use them anymore that I've ever seen, but uh, they're out there. We're applying that bleached out white there, and it really does bring a little bit of uh, light to the top of the bobber there. The old, whole goal with this first a few layers here is to apply just uh, light in the right places so that it, it looks like a, a, a orb. I want it to look like a circle there, but not just a circle. We want to make sure it looks a little bit at least somewhat 3D on a 2D item. Um, and then once you get up on it, of course, we just want it to look kind of just cankered and nasty and just fun. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so with that part done, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start to add a permanent alizarin crimson. We're not using any other red other than this because I want it to be of a dark, dinged out red. And, and permanent alizarin crimson over that dark base really does do that for us. Now, I am being very generous here. Um, I, I'm applying quite a bit of paint to this, but I'm applying it in different ways. So at one point, I'm kind of flat with my brush. The next moment, I'm kind of working on the edge. And I'm really just kind of really saving some of that brown, allowing a lot of it to kind of peek through in certain areas. But I really want to apply a lot of red to the very middle of that crescent moon shape so that it really just it just has a really bright red. And it kind of almost makes it look like that this wood bobber is like maybe painted and it's maybe like chipping or kind of deteriorating in some areas around the bottom where it'll be sitting in the water more so. Uh, and then as we go into other layers later, we'll kind of darken this out yet again with some grunge. But, uh, but it really quickly allows us to apply just a nice, rich color to it. Of course, this would be a color that you could vary, and you can vary any of the colors in all honesty. Uh, but if you do want something like this from my Etsy shop, just reach out to me, and we'll, and we'll, we'll work out a price for you. Um, something like this would probably run you about 150 or so dollars, but um, otherwise, uh, it's, it's pretty good in general. Just the design and then just how, how quickly I can put it together over a matter of a few days as long as I have the time in my, my work schedule. I was going to paint the actual banding across the middle in a red uh, tone as well, like a lot of the plastic ones are now. I just decided not to do that. I thought that it would take away some of the characteristics of the bobber. Uh, and I decided to leave that a nice, rich, dark brown. So I actually do come over it with a little bit more burnt, uh, umber later on in the process. And I actually kind of highlight it a little bit with some raw sienna, not very much at all, just to give the overall top coat of that just a little bit of variation in color. Uh, it's very hard to spot that on that dark underbase, but it, it really does really kind of look cool. I think that the, the darker band in the middle does pop quite a bit more than if it was already blended red with the lower uh, half of the bobber. So I think that really looks good. Now, during this process, I did consult my mother. This is a gift from my father for Christmas of this year. Uh, you'll see that later on in the, the playlist. Uh, when I release those videos, I will do a sketch on the back of the canvas of me and my father fishing at the, the beach when I was younger. It's a very special photo to me and him, and uh, I really want to kind of uh, uh, preserve that in some different uh, mediums uh, throughout my, my art career. So this is an opportunity where I'll be able to use that. Uh, at this point, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of just accentuating some a little bit of, of browns. Um, this is just raw uh, burnt umber, and I'm just kind of just uh, caking it in here and there. I'm also going to start to introduce some Dollar and Rowney inks. Now, these are acrylic inks that you can get at most hobby stores, and they're just very rich in color. They're very thin, they're very watery, and of course, you can add waters to them on your palette, and then they just kind of run all over the place. They're my very favorite thing for any kind of grunge or nastiness in running water, uh, and it really does uh, create a nice effect. So I'm going back between burnt umber here and the, the acrylic ink, and we're going to create a nice water band here. Now, this water band is specifically going to be on the white portion of the bobber, and that's maybe where the bobber would be overly sinking a little bit, and then the water would be just continuously sitting around that edge, creating a water line. And I really do think that really brings up the realism to it a little bit. And then as we kind of continue on, we'll add some drips down. Now, this will be just natural drips that drip down the canvas, and we'll just let them do their thing, let them work their own magic. And sometimes nature and gravity and science is the best thing that we can do for our art. Just let it do its thing and sit back and, and wait. So you'll see that happen here in a few moments in a more close-up ver version. <clears throat> so definitely check out the other uh, rest of the playlist guys and check out some of the other awesome canvases I, I've been doing I really do hope to produce more canvases for my YouTube channel here in the near future I really want to build out that playlist um, And before I work into some other mediums here in the, in the near future Whether that be some miniatures or some RC cars or just some other forms of, uh, uh, of content and material As long as it has something to do with art then I'm kind of cool with that Here we are just applying some ink highlights to the top uh, cork uh, of the of the bobber there and we're going to go ahead and apply some of those drips along the bottom rim and then we'll go ahead and apply those to the the top right there now this is going to hang on the wall kind of catty corner uh that is my goal there so when i kind of turn around to do the canvas sketch on the back we'll have to make sure that that is centered with the drip lines 
Look at the magic of gravity, you guys. Let gravity do the work. Work smarter, not harder in your art. Um, and then uh, and it makes life a lot easier and your art more enjoyable. But I really do hope you all enjoyed this uh, video. Uh, this is the sixth time speed of this. I did release a real-time video of this. If you'd like to see that entire video, it is about an hour long. And it will be released uh, either before this or shortly after. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, like, and comment. Let me know. What do you think about the bobber? Would you like your own? Make sure you check out my Etsy shop. Later, guys. Thanks for watching.